G'day YouTubers and welcome to the next episode on Northern Moreton Bay. I had intended to put this video out before I put the previous one out, so this one's out of sequence. It's out of sequence because I was waiting for some copyright approvals. I did manage to get some, but I didn't manage to get all that I wanted. Nevertheless, I'm very grateful to the people who did give me approvals and send me some pictures to put into this. Gives you a good idea of what's down the bottom of Curtin Artificial Reef. I think you'll enjoy this video particularly because there's a lot more structure down on that Curtin Artificial Reef than anyone knows about, or at least anyone that I've seen on the internet knows about. There's a little mud map getting around on the internet that says, oh, this is the wrecks that are down there, but there's really a lot more down there than that. There are 32 wrecks on this reef. Anyway, enough talk about it. You'll see it all in the images. Let's roll the video. The Underwater Research Group of Queensland is Queensland's oldest dive club. And the state government granted them a lease on the Curtin Artificial Reef area back in 1968. And then they started to establish the artificial reef by sinking ships there. The first one was sunk on the 12th of August 1968. And the last one pretty much 30 years later. And they averaged about one ship a year in that time. This image of the dive site giving the distance between the ships, etc., although it doesn't give any GPS marks for them. Must be a somewhat older image because we know there's 32 ships down there, but there's certainly not 32 ships shown on this map. So it's missing quite a few, but hopefully I'll get some GPS marks for them all eventually. And even more optimistically, I'll be able to put some names to them. I'll put some links in the description to the underwater research group if you're interested in having a look at their site. Now this is the same image made a little bit larger. I'm just going to let this scroll through. You can pause the video from time to time if you want to have a closer look at it. I've got some other images of the layout of the wreck coming up in just a few seconds. But this image is all over the internet. Uh, I think it must be one of the original ones done by the underwater research group. You can find it just about everywhere on the internet. And as I said earlier, it seems to be a bit of an old image because it doesn't show all the ships. I particularly like this scan of the Curtin Artificial Reef area. It was made by the Port of Brisbane Corporation and they have kindly allowed me to use it in this video. It shows the location of all the wrecks and since it was made in 2004, all the wrecks are in place by that time. If you know how to interpret these images, you'll see that some of the wrecks are starting to be reclaimed by sand. That's pretty typical in Moreton Bay. The floor of Moreton Bay is like a living thing. Wrecks come and go. They're still there all the time, but they get covered up with sand and then some tides and currents wash the sand away again, you'll see them. Then they'll be covered up again, you'll lose them, so on and so forth. The bigger the wreck, the harder it is to cover up. So most of the wrecks on Curtin are fairly large and are not covered up. But some of the pontoons, tyres, etc. are getting covered up. They're disappearing under the sand. They may uncover again in time. One saving grace about the Curtin Artificial Reef area is that it has enormous run of current for the tides and that probably helps move the sand away but on the other hand it probably also helps move it onto the wreck. But this is an excellent image to study and get an idea of the relative location of the ships and where you can fish. This is another hydrographic scan that was provided by the Port of Brisbane Corporation and again I'm very grateful that they've allowed me to use it. They've done some post-processing on this one to pick out the outlines of the wrecks that are down there. I think this is probably the best image for getting the relative locations of the wrecks and figuring out where the best fishing locations could be. Obviously you don't want to fish on top of the wreck and you don't want your baits going into the wreck to get snagged, but you do want to be close enough to the wreck that the fish that are there might be attracted out to take your bait. Now over time I hope to put some GPS marks on all of these wrecks and I'll put them up in subsequent videos at some point. But right now I'm just going to shut up and let this image scroll through. You can pause the video and go backwards and forwards a little bit if you want to see it in more detail. The 
here's a look at one of the rigs that I had a hook straightened out on. The bottom hook is the cheaper Chinese hook, which I was wanting to try to see if they're good enough to use and save some money on hooks. The two red hooks up above it are mustad hooks. Of course, the fish took the bottom hook. Had he taken one of the top two hooks, I'd have him on the boat. But he took the bottom hook, straightened it out enough and got off. That's been my story at Curtin for the most part. I've had three hooks straightened out, about four or five bite offs, and everything I've landed has been, I think, undersized. I might have got one or two fish that I could take home, but nothing remarkable. I've only started fishing the artificial reefs in the last couple of years, so I've still got a lot to learn about them. I don't get up to Curtin very much, so I've got even more to learn about that one. Now I just want to go through some sounder shots that I have from Curtin Artificial Reef. They're not the best shots in the world because I took these when I was still learning how to use my Raymarine sounder. I was playing with the settings so the shots aren't the best. However, I think they still serve to show that in order to get the fish at Curtin you need to be able to use your sounder and you need to be able to understand what you're seeing on the sounder. Curtin's a place where you definitely need to know where you're dropping your line if you want to catch the fish. But even more importantly, Curtin's a place where you need to know where you're dropping your anchor if you don't want to lose it. Definitely don't want to drop your anchor on a ship. You don't want to drop it where it's going to drag into a ship and you don't want to drop it where your anchor rope might twist around a ship. I had a lucky escape one time I was over there. When the boat swung around, my anchor rope caught on a piece of the ship. Fortunately, I realised what had happened, so when I pulled it in, I did a bit of a circle and it came undone. There's a lot of anchors down on the reef at Curtin. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Don't let yours become one of them. The other thing I wasn't very good at at this time was documenting what I'd taken screenshots of. So this screenshot doesn't even come with GPS coordinates. It's somewhere on the Curtin artificial reef. It's some sort of structure. And again, this was an early shot, so I don't even know what structure it is. I didn't have the thing tuned in well enough to tell. I can't tell very much from the 2D sonar, even the fish aren't showing up very well in that. Right, so apart from the fact that there's some structure there, that's about all I can tell from this image. The down imaging makes it a lot clearer. In this I suspect it could be a wreck that's getting covered up with sand, but again I'm not sure about that. However, what I can be sure of is that there's some bait fish holding around it and some bigger fish. Again, not a great image, and I'm not sure exactly what wreck this is, but at least we can see that there's a lot of bait fish holding there, and a couple of bigger fish as well. It's easier to see when we zoom in on the traditional sonar image. You can see the bait school there holding down close to the bottom, and what looks like some larger fish just above them. The sounder puts a depth at whatever it thinks is a larger fish, and it's tagged one fish there at 35 feet. Just how accurate it is in picking a larger fish, I haven't established even at this late date. The side imaging here is not too bad in my opinion. I still can't figure out what I'm looking at on the bottom, what sort of wreck it is, or even if it is a wreck. However, the fish are popping out fairly well. There's fish on both sides of the side imaging, so I've passed pretty much over the centre of the school, I think. And the fact that they're showing up on side imaging so well, I think I can say that there are some bigger fish in amongst them. There's over 30 ships down on the Curtin Reef now, and I don't know the names of all of them. I don't even know the relative positions of all of them. This is definitely a wreck, but it's certainly not one that's marked on the sketch map that I have but it is showing some good fish. If we zoom in on the traditional sonar image, we can see a lot more of the detail. There's some bait fish right under the transducer. You can see the arrow pointing to them there. We can see there's definitely some larger fish there from the red in the centre of the arches. And the sounder agrees with us because it's going crazy trying to put depth readings up for all the things that it thinks is a larger fish. The one I marked with the bottom arrow is a bit hard to see, but I'm pretty sure there's a decent fish there. 
and the ones under the right hand arrow there's a lot of fish under there holding very close to the structure as well as that one holding a little bit away from it. This isn't a bad side imaging shot in that you can see some of the structure and you can see quite a lot of fish holding around the structure. I must have fluked it this time because I seem to have it dialed in fairly well at this point. The fish are that clear you don't even really need me to draw circles around them to point them out. There's certainly some big ones there and the fact that you can see most of the others and their actual grains of rice rather than little fuzzy clouds means that they're bigger fish, not just bait. I'm fairly certain that what we're looking at in this scan is the wreck of the Lady Norman. It's in approximately the right position on the sketch map that I have, although the sketch map I have doesn't feature all of the ships. So I could be wrong, but I think it's the Lady Norman. And this it looks like a huge pinnacle coming out of the wreck, but there's a few arches around it. They may be good fish because I was playing with the gain and the other settings on the sounder and I did lose quite a lot of the quality of the images at times when I was playing. However, the wreck itself shows up fairly well in this side imaging shot. I've circled the wreck here and now as I do the video, I don't think this really is the Lady Norman because the orientation of the wreck does not map the sketch map I have of it as a dive site. It's facing the wrong direction. So it must be one of the ships that's been sunk there since the sketch map was made. And in this final image, I'm once again over another wreck, but I've messed up the 2D sonar settings again for this screenshot. You can't really tell what's down there. There are definitely some fish down there, but you can't tell just how good they are. Anytime I go up to Curtin Artificial Reef, which isn't all that often, but whenever I'm there, I do try to do a little bit of mapping with the sonar. And now that I've got my waypoint management software working fairly well, at least for the waypoints, I should be able to organize them a lot better and keep track of them better. But mapping it is very difficult. Just for the sheer number of boats that are there, they get in the way. I want to do a grid pattern and map the area, but there's that many boats there, I just can't do it. So I end up doing this little patch of it here, there and everywhere, and then try to stitch it together when I get back and make sense of what I've seen, comparing it to the map of ships that I know are down there. So it's yet another of my projects that's a continuing work in progress, but one day it will be complete, I hope. Now these are the marks that I've taken on Curtin Artificial Reef over the course of time. I took all of these before I was really organised with a program to manage my marks and screenshots, so they're not as well organised as I am these days. The marks that look like wrecks, the whitish marks that is, are I believe on wrecks. There may be multiple marks on the same wreck, I'm not sure about that, I haven't reconciled them all yet. I will one day, if I live long enough. I've got so many things on at the moment, but anyway. The other marks, the red marks, probably not wrecks. They could be structure, they could be bait schools that I saw. I don't really remember. But have a poke around the marks. I'm sure you'll turn something up. Just remember, try not to anchor on the wrecks. There's some pictures coming up of what's down there on the wrecks. There's a lot of stuff there to get your anchor tangled in, and you'll never get it back if you do. There's no doubt that fish hang in close to structure, but they also move away from it a little bit. You don't have to be sitting right on top of the wreck in order to catch a fish. You can be a little bit away from it, I would say 100 feet, say 30, 40 metres or so, and you're still going to catch a fish. That's been my observation from snorkeling and scuba diving around bombies and things, that the fish hang around them, but they will move out as well. Now not only do we have the good folks at the Underwater Research Group of Queensland to thank for having the Curtin Artificial Reef in the first place, but we also need to thank them for keeping it clean for us and cleaning up all the rubbish that we fishermen leave down there. Now we don't do it intentionally in a lot of cases. I have to say that the beer bottle they found is definitely an intentional deposit, but our hooks get snagged, our sinkers get snagged. We leave all sorts of things on the bottom, the more unfortunate among us leave anchors down there and anchor chains, all that's expensive to replace. So keep an eye on your sounder when you're dropping your anchor and try to avoid dropping it too close to a wreck. But these guys do a wonderful job in cleaning up the reef and getting rid of a lot of the rubbish. 
You can see from the reports there just how much work they've done. I've only put a couple of little extracts of the reports here just to give you an idea of the work that these guys put into it. I'll put some links in the video description so that you can go and have a look at the actual reports if you're interested. You know, these guys deserve a real pat on the back, not just for establishing the artificial reef in the first place, but for keeping going back and maintaining it as well. You know, they put in the hard yards so we can go there and enjoy it. And you know, they really could use a little bit of support, I'd reckon. So if you can't do anything else, at the very least, don't drop your empty beer bottles over for them to pick up. There's also a link to their website. You can go and have a look at everything else that they do as well. And I'll just finish off here with some underwater images of the wrecks at Curtin Artificial Reef. This is one of the reasons why the video was delayed. I was holding off hoping to get some copyright approvals to use some of the images that are up on the Underwater Research Group's website. However, it just proved too difficult to contact the owners of the copyright to get the approval. I did manage to contact a couple and I'd like to say thank you to Scott Gratton and Kirsty Ford from the Underwater Research Group of Queensland who provided these images. And I will put a link in the video description below to the Underwater Research Group's website where you can go and have a look at some of the rest of the images that I was unable to contact the owners of. They're really good images and it does pay to know what's down there when you're fishing. I found that my fishing improved a lot many, many years ago when I started snorkeling and scuba diving and I got to look at some of the structure that I was actually fishing on and look at the fish that were hanging around it, what their behaviour was and that helped me a lot to work out how I should fish. This image and the previous image is of a statue called the Nautilus which was sunk there as a sort of a collaboration between Riot Gaming and the Underwater Research Group. Apparently Riot Games have a game called League of Legends and 42,000 people competed in a competition to win enough points to earn them the right to have their name carved on the statue. So the statue lies east of the Rock Driller Wreck on the southern end of the Curtin Artificial Reef and the GPS coordinates are on the picture there. Try not to get your anchor snagged on it. The Curtin Artificial Reef is one of the largest reef projects in Australia and these two images here are of a Brisbane tram that was sunk there. I don't know how many of you that are watching this are old enough to remember the trams running in Brisbane. But as you can see this one has been largely reclaimed by the sand. I was hoping to get a few more pictures so that I could show the marine life hanging around the wrecks. These two pictures here do show a little bit. You can see that there's fish holding close into the wrecks. You can see that there's fish swimming around a distance from the wrecks. The point being you don't need to be right on top of the wrecks getting snags in order to get fish. I prefer to fish a little bit away from snags but close enough that the fish are going to be in the area. Now, truth be told, if you're not near the snags, you're not going to get fish if you're nowhere near the snags, but you don't have to have your bait right in amongst them. At least that's my opinion, the way I've always fished. Also noteworthy in these pictures is, again, the amount of structure there is left on these wrecks, on the decks and everything. Just an ideal place for you to lose hooks, anchors and anchor chains that get snagged up in there. Once they're snagged up in the deck fittings, you're going to be really, really lucky if you get them back. It's basically going to be a case of cut your rope and go home without an anchor. So again, for this reason, I say sound around, find out where the wreck is and try to drop your anchor just off the wreck. And a big thank you to Coralie Dodd for supplying this last lot of pictures here. Coralie is also with the Underwater Research Group. And that's it for this video. I'd have to say that making this video has given me a lot more ideas on how I want to try and fish the artificial reef up there. As I've said, I'm not very experienced with artificial reef fishing. I've mainly fished the shallow reefs around the bay most of my life or offshore. But I would like to crack the code and making this video, watching the images has given me a few ideas of some different approaches I could try to see if that improves my catch rate up there. 
I don't get up there very often, but looking forward to the next trip to try it out. So thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you got something out of it as well. I might see you up on Curtin Artificial Reef sometime. Until then, good fishing.